So good evening, everyone. Sure. Town Council Budget Public Hearing, Wednesday, May 6, 2020, via GoTo meeting. Um, I guess I'm going to read some ground rules as far as the, the process of all this, but up front, again, we're just going to reiterate to everybody if you can just mute your phones unless you're speaking, that would be helpful for the feedback so that we can hear people when they do talk. Um, if you do wish to talk and you're on the, uh, the computer platform, please send a message to Mary because she will moderate that and then she will be able to announce you uh, when it's your turn to speak. So those are the couple of the two things I want to get out of the way uh, early. Um, as far as uh, the guidelines, um, basically what we do, we just want to welcome you to the virtual meeting of the Town Council public hearing on May 6th. This is an entirely new process for us, and we are trying our very best to continue the important work of the town government and to be as open and transparent as possible in this difficult time of social distancing. We ask that everyone be patient with this process and avoid disrupting the meeting process so that we can maintain order. This meeting will be recorded and recording of the meeting will be posted on the town's website along with the meeting minutes and receiving emails. If you would like to watch the meeting and not participate, it is being broadcasted live on Comcast Xfinity Channel 9 and Frontier, Frontier TV Channel 6089. The meeting is also being streamed live on the Valley Shore Community Television website and on the Valley Shore Community Television's YouTube channel. The meeting link is on the town's website. If you are participating by smartphone or computer and would like to address the council, please let us know in the chat section and you will be recognized in turn. During the public, period, during the public comment period, individuals' microphones will be unmuted once it is time to talk. Please limit your comments to two to three minutes. Before speaking, please identify yourself by name and address. Once we are done taking comments from online participants, then we will open up the phone lines. Please talk one at a time and identify yourself by name and address. We will allow everyone to speak once. If you would like to speak again, you will be given a chance once everyone has a chance to speak. The council is here this evening to, li to, to listen to the public's comments, so please no direct questions to council members and or the town manager at this time. We ask that you please be respectful to others' opinions, whether you support those opinions or not. Once the public hearing is closed this evening, the town council will meet on May 11th to discuss amendments to the current budget. Once we have completed the amended budget, we will again publish the budget for public view. We're all trying to be as transparent as possible, given the current environment. This certainly is not what anyone would have wanted or how anyone would have wanted this process to go. We are just following the guidelines set forth in the executive order from the governor's office. Understand we are not only members of the town council, we are also citizens of Clinton and are facing the same extraordinary circumstances as everyone. We will do our very best to put forth a budget that will benefit the citizens, but also keep Clinton moving forward. So at this point, we will open the public hearing up on the town and board of education budgets. Um, Mary then will go forth and, and announce the names of people that would like to speak. I haven't received any requests yet. Okay, so people are, are people on this platform are interested in um, making comments. Please put your name forth. If you're on the computer, you can go right into the chat section. If you want to speak, just let me know through that platform, through the chat feature, and then I'll know that you I can unmute you and you want to speak. Right now, I don't have anyone that has requested that. Mary, are you sure people know where to find that chat button? If you're right now, we're just doing the computer ones. So if you look on the screen, it should have the chat section. And I see that Erica, um, she she is up first. Erica Gelvin, she had just requested that she would like to speak on the education budget. So Erica, you can unmute yourself. All right, thank you all. I'm, I'm happy to be able to see you at least in some version uh, today. 
it feel this 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 has become my entire world like my professional life is all on remote distance learning my my volunteer life is all on remote distance learning it feels very uh surreal at this point um i just want uh my address is to alden drive in clinton of course and i just wanted to um uh really kind of speak on behalf of the board of ed budget to say that you know we um on the education side understand the, the uh, realities that we are facing um the realities that we are facing not only in clinton but in uh connecticut and in the nation and the world for that matter um and we really uh are are open to being partners with you and trying to navigate these uncharted territory this uncharted territory um, the budget that we had presented to you originally is really a very tight budget, a very thoughtful budget anyway. Um, but I would just, you know, kind of ask you to keep in mind the fact that, um, you know, we're now trying, we've been charged with figuring out how we are going to open school um, in the fall and what kind of um, expenses and um, supports that we're going to have in place. Um, this is actually directive, a directive that we've gotten from uh, the State Department of Education as well as what we're working on in district. So I would just ask kind of as you're making decisions to think about the fact that um, you know, we are figuring out how to meet those obligations with the, um, you know, under the umbrella of the re the budgetary realities that we have. So I would just respectfully request that you keep that in mind when you're making decisions about um, what the budgetary picture needs to look like going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. If anybody on this platform is having trouble with the chat box, don't forget, you can also call in. So the number is listed on the meeting that if you um, if you'd like to call in because you're having trouble with the with the chat requesting, um, please feel free to call in. Bruce, can you hear me? Yes, indeedy. Okay, you're next. Okay. For the record, it's Bruce Farmer, One Liberty Village, Clinton, 36 year resident. I have reviewed the uh, budgets and knowing what I do as a former first selectman and former board of finance member, here's an important reality to consider due to the COVID-19 situation. At this point in time, when state and federal governments are now forced to increase spending for this event, which will result in leveling more taxes and creating larger deficits. We really do not know where Clinton is headed for our town, school system, for our taxpayers and their families with respect to the rest of this current fiscal fiscal year or the next 2021 fiscal year. So I would like to recommend that we consider going flat on our 2021 fiscal year budgets. I've come to this recommendation uh, at a difficult time for all of us, which I am really not pleased to suggest and it is further supported by other important considerations. According to the legislators that I have contacted, approximately 20% of our taxpayers have lost their jobs due to COVID-19 and many others are working less hours. Several businesses, as you all know, are hurting and others are closed. Another 10% are earning below the poverty level for several reasons and unfortunately have been for quite some time. And many seniors on fixed incomes are already very challenged. Unfortunately, as I believe our new town manager has indicated, 
we may have come to a situation where we will have a shortfall in tax revenues as well. And state and federal reimbursements may slow and be reduced for the school system and the town. The governor has given the green light to the town council to set the final budgets for this next fiscal year. And I know that the proposed budgets increases specifically are representing fixed expenses and existing contracts. But I do believe the Board of Ed, the Town Council, the Director of Finance, together with the recommendations from our new town manager, God bless you, Carl, by the way, <laughs> that you all can get us to no increase for this next fiscal year since our taxpayers are hurting in so many ways. Many thanks to all of you who are working on these challenged budgets, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be heard. Thank you, Bruce. Right. Thank you, Bruce. Okay, next we have Phil. Phil, let me just, uh, I don't know if you can unmute yourself. You're next. Yep. No, nope, you're still on mute. Nope, not yet. There you, there you go. How about that? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Hey, great to see everybody. You poor bastards. <laughs> okay. I think you'd be doing real well if you could get to, to a 0% increase or at least close to zero. I think that I know that's already a goal, but uh, I, I certainly would support that. Uh, a lot of folks in town frequently compare our tax rate to other towns to conclude Clinton's taxes are too high and are very vocal about it. As most of us know, the mill rate is only half the story. You also have to use your assessed value to determine your actual tax bill. A similar product uh, property in another town with a lower mill rate might actually generate the same tax, tax bill. The reason I believe a close to zero tax increase is a good goal and nothing further than that or below that is the following. Town expenses, both operating and capital, do not go away and certainly do not shrink. I think you will find that postponed projects almost always cost more if delayed. An example, might, I, I shouldn't bring this up, but an example might be the old Morgan roofs that were neglected for a long period of time. So I think putting things off is not good fiscal policy. Uh, if you happen to go below zero, as some may suggest, <clears throat> it may cause, only cause taxes to be raised in the future than they norm, more than they normally would be. My biggest fear is that by cutting necessary expenses now, we will be tempted to dip into the undesignated fund the following year so that we will have gained nothing. So catching up is kind of a losing proposition. Uh, our personal expenses go on, the town's expenses go on, and uh, we have to do the things that are necessary. So I support what you're doing. I support our town manager. And if you can get closer to zero, I'm a happy camper. Thank you very much. Thank you, Phil. Yep. <clears throat> OK, I don't have anyone else that had said that they would like to address the council. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else for the last time? Is there anybody else on this call, on this platform? Uh, that would like to speak. If not, we can. Uh, we do have some callers that are waiting. We can move over to the to the phone lines. So, I mean, at this point, let's let's Mary, let's move to the phone lines then, and then what we can do is, if there's other people that pop in on this, we can get to them after we're done with the phones. Okay. So I have unmuted the four calls that we have. Okay. 
So if you're calling in on your phone and you'd like to address the council, you can speak now. We can do one at a time. Yep. Anybody on the phone that called in that would like to speak? Uh, oh, hi. Am I unmuted? No. You're unmuted now, Jane. Okay. I would just like to speak in favor of the Board of Education budget. Are um, good now? I think, Tom. I just want to make sure Mary's all set. Are we good, Mayor? Yes, we are. All right, thank you, Jane. Okay. Uh, like I said, I'm just here in favor of the Board of Education. I'm in favor of all the budgets, but I, I really want to stress that we need to keep the Board of Ed going and the schools going, and it's important. Jane, name and address, please. Oh, I'm sorry, Jane Scully Welch, 101 Grove Street. And as far as the other other budgets, I think you know you've probably Carl, I think has done a great job, and all of you, having been on the board of finance, I think you've uh, showed me what you're supposed to do, and I think you've gotten it as low as you can go. Okay, so Thank thanks. You. Thank you, Jane. Are any of the phone callers? They're all unmuted. Is anybody on, on the phone lines that would like to speak? It can't be all this easy. Oh, hold on one second. I see. Um, yeah. John Allen, you're next. You wanted to speak? I, if you can unmute yourself. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I guess it's just, a, just a general question because I think you know you guys work your, your tails off putting the budget together, but given this uh, twilight zone we're living in, um, this budget goes in effect July one. God has a clue what's going to happen between now and nobody does. No state, no government is going to happen. What what kind of recourse do we have as a town, legally or uh, Carl, or in your bag of tricks, if there if it ever covers anything like this, I mean, suppose you know, suppose the worst possible ha happens, we the state ends up with its two point four billion dollar deficit. Uh, they raise, uh, they cut all the funding to the towns, and they have to raise, or you know, whatever they raise, they just cut cut, it, cut the funding to the towns. What what can we do as a town to adjust after this budget is passed on July one? Did you hear my question? Yeah, we, we're not going to take any questions now, John. Okay, that's the that's the only thing. Somewhere when you when you're getting through it, that's the question. I'd like just to hear somebody address me by the end of this. That's all. Okay. Okay. Thank you, um, Valerie. Nye, you're next. If you want to unmute yourself. Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Valerie and I, 14 Stonewall Lane. Um, I am the outgoing president of the Clinton PTA. Um, this is sort of my last couple months, but as a member of and the president of the PTA, representing over 12, uh, 200 members, um, I just want to say that especially through this uh, pandemic, we respect uh the situations this unprecedented situation that everybody is in but we've you know been in contact with um the school administrators i have um four kids two of which are in the public school system and seeing what they're doing every day it's um it's incredible how the teachers uh have risen up to this challenge um, and I also am uh, grateful and I do believe that the administration and the boards um, have put together a, a fiscally responsible budget that um, that respects the situation that we're in now that has looked for lots of savings. And so I'm speaking um, in support of, of the education budget and also the town budget. I do think that I've always said this is a community and um, 
the town and education is one as a community. And I know that um, the members of the Clinton PTA uh, think the same thing. So um, I believe a lot of our members have emailed the town council. And, um, and so I just want to reference their emails and know that we're supportive of both budgets. Thanks. Thank you, Val. Thank you, Joe Alves. You're you're next. If you want to unmute yourself, that's Joe. I can't unmute him. So I think you you muted yourself. Um, he wants, he's not sure how to unmute himself. Can he, does he want to call in? You can call in if you can't figure it out. Okay, he's on the phone. Are you on the phone now, Joe? Uh, some were saying that there's a red button on your screen. Maybe you can tap the button or depending on if you're calling from your smartphone or what device you're using. All of the phone lines are off mute. So if, if he if you're calling in on the phone, you should be able to speak because I haven't had I don't have anyone muted that's on a phone line. Anyone on the phone lines that wish to talk? Yeah. Anybody else dial in? Uh, I mean, uh, put their name through the chat, Mary? No, no one else. So if nobody else, all the people that are on the phone lines, if you'd like to speak. I'm taking it off the mute. No. Uh, Peter Vanderslaus, he just said he would like to speak. You could unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm at Fort Laconia. And uh, just have a, a general statement. And uh, as we are dealing with this uh, unprecedented situation, as we've already mentioned before, uh, where lots of people have either lost their jobs or have taken pay cuts, I for one have taken a pay cut. Um, I noticed here that the salaries of majority of our <coughs> uh, town folk or town, um, uh, town people like the first selectmen have gone up for the 21 budget and town taxes are going up uh, considerably to 2.2%. Um, I guess my question is, is why are we, it's not a question, I just am not in favor of that happening as others are losing their jobs and taking pay cuts. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, Joe had just messaged me again and said that he thinks he's a, he was able to unmute himself. Okay. Uh, are you there, Joe? I still see that you're on mute, though.
I'm not sure. So if you want to let us know what platform, are you on a computer or are you on your smartphone, tablet, maybe we can help you. Just message me. Did you, when you called in on your phone, let me say, did you put in, Joe, did you put in an ID when you called? Because the calls are just coming through as caller one, caller two, caller three. So, and all of them are unmuted. So I'm not sure if you're coming over in a different way. Has anybody else signed in to talk, Mary, or no? No. Okay. So the phone line is just unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yes, is that you, Joe? Can you hear me now? Yes. I don't know if you did something or I did, but I really appreciate your effort to get no me problem. get me on. I'm not sure what I have to offer is that important, but I I just want to say I, I haven't studied the budget, so I can't speak uh, intelligently about the budget. But I do want to say that I'm encouraged by the statements of the new town manager that he's going to try to get the increase down to uh, down to zero. Just the fact that he's going to try seems to be kind of uh, refreshing. For years now, uh, it seems that Clinton's budget has been increasing at a rate that is higher than the surrounding communities of, of Westbrook, Old Saybrook, uh, and Madison. And I don't really see a commensurate increase in the either the production of, of town employees or quality. So I'm hopeful that that trend of, of increases surpassing our surrounding communities uh, is somewhat mollified this year. Thank you for, for the opportunity and, and your patience. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Is there anyone else that would wish to speak? Chris, I don't have anyone else that sent in a request. Okay. Well, hold on one second. Okay. Abby, I just got your request. You can unmute yourself if you'd like and address the council. Hi, Abby Rock a Priori, uh, 35 River Road. I am a uh, board member of the Clinton PTA. Um, I, I work at the Joel School and I'm also a small business owner here in town. And I just wanted to let you all know about my support for the town and obviously the school budget. Um, I've been working very hard every day to keep my three kids in check and make sure they're doing what they need to do from elementary all the way up to high school. Um, and the way that these teachers and these administrators have been taking um, 
so very little so very quickly and making it feel like home has been amazing um i could go on and on about it um so that's obviously before that i was in support but now it's um rock solid my decision so um i just wanted to let you all know that that's how i feel thank you thank you abby okay i don't have anyone else that has sent in a request Okay. If anyone else wants to speak, just let us know. Uh, nobody else is stepping up and interested in speaking at this time. Um, I just want to let everybody know as well that if you feel that you, you would want to make a comment later, uh, have something else to say, um, please feel free to send an email to budget at clintonct.org. Um, and obviously we'll, we'll follow up on that email as well. I just want everybody to know that these are just, th these are difficult platforms sometimes to, to make everything work. We did receive over 80 emails um, in reference to the budget. So, that, so there are, there's still plenty of, of people that did come forth and have their comments um, made, wanted to be heard. So don't feel like this platform is a, you know, is something that uh, is going to be, you know, something that we should look at as, as a great way to, to make a decision. So um, a lot of people have put forth their opinions and we're, we're excited that, that they did that. Unfortunately, this platform is not the greatest. It's very difficult. Um, again, if there's nobody else that here wants to speak up, I'll ask one more time. Uh, if not, please understand that we, again, will do the best we can uh, within the parameters that we have and doing the best for Clinton as a whole and for all the citizens. Um, and again, we are all part of you as well, so uh, we are not separate from any of this. Um, so if there's anybody else that wishes to speak at this time. No, I don't have one that has requested. Sorry, ma? No, I haven't received any other requests. Okay. At this time, then, I would uh, entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Moved. Second. Second. Dan is here. Any discussions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same. Again. Okay. We are then adjourned. Again, I want to thank everybody for showing up and uh, for those of you being heard. We appreciate it. And again, we will be back. Uh, May 11th, uh, we'll have the amended uh, budget completed. It will be posted so everybody can review it, and we will move forward from that point. Thank you again, everyone.